Hi, how you going? In this video, I'll be going through the top 10 worst areas in Souls games, including Elden Ring. You simply cannot not include Elden Ring because the DLC has been announced and everyone's very excited, but it's not just for show. It has, just like any other Souls game, some absolute stinker levels. In this video, all the locations are in a particular order, going from less terrible to the worst, but of course, it's subjective and opinions may vary from person to person. This one's mine. Let's start. At number 10, I have something very trivial and obvious, and it's Blytown from Dark Souls one, let's just get it out of the way. Blighttown deserves to be here even though most of us already know how to navigate through it with ease. It feels like Blighttown became a common noun at some point and people just love calling bad locations from other games Blighttown. 90% of the location is rickety scaffolding, it's very easy to fall off of it. On top of that it's dark, it's hard to see where to go, most of the enemies are obscured and <laughs> enemies man, Blighttown has it all. It has meatheads with giant clubs, it has crackheads shooting darts at you that apply nasty toxic status, it has <laughs> little dogs that breathe fire. One of my friends said it looks and feels exactly like like Jacksonville, but I've never been there, so I don't know. Blighttown, just like many other locations in this video, is not too bad when you know where to go. For example, it's much easier if you simply follow the torches. It's kind of cool though how Blighttown connects with Firelink Shrine. Discovering the shortcut for the first time was such a relief. On top of that, Quelag is a decent boss that we all love for the lore. The reason why Blighttown is such an infamous place is probably because it used to be poorly optimized in the earlier version of the game. It just wasn't too fun stumbling through it with a handful of toxic darts up your arse at 15 FPS. I'm not saying it's too fun at 60, but it's much more manageable and just like most of the players, I don't have any problems with it anymore. At number 9 I have another trivial location that I also want to get out of the way and it's Sense Fortress from Dark Souls 1. Some people actually find it fun and challenging, like a good make or break location before Ain Orlando to see if you're worthy enough. Well maybe, but without a doubt Sense Fortress hates you. It hates you, it wants you to die and most importantly it doesn't give a shit about your plus 10 Black Knight sword. You will fall and fall and fall and you will get frustrated. You realize that you're in for a treat the second you take a step past the gate. You are met by two serpent men and a pressure plate that your hollow arse will absolutely activate on your first playthrough. You also have to go through a bunch of pendulum traps while the snake people shoot lightning bolts at you. The most insulting thing about the first pendulum trap is that if or should I say when you get hit by one of the swinging axes and fall down, it's not high enough for you to die and you'll end up in a pit full of titanite demons. This sums up the place pretty much. Annoying enemies, pendulum traps, pressure plates, giant rolling balls, platforming sections. It's also pretty easy to miss the bonfire on top of the fortress, so if you do miss it and die, you have to go through the whole thing again, but that's on you, I guess. I feel like both Sense Fortress and Blighttown are iconic locations that people have grown to like over time, but if you're on your first run, prepare to get pissed off on more than one occasion. Moving on to number 8 on the list, I have an area from Elden Ring. Elden Ring has a few terrible locations like Consecrated Snowfield, for example, but for this video, another one takes the shit cake. Of course, it's Lake of Rot. I mean, it's in the name, I guess, and you don't have to be an expert to know what to expect from it. It's a lake full of rot, a king of poison swamps. Seriously, this place is big and most of it is rotten poopy water for as far as the eye can see. The thing with Lake of Rot is it's not actually all that terrible. It's intimidating, sure, but if you know what you're doing, where to go and have enough preserving boluses, it becomes a breeze. On top of that, you can equip a mushroom set and use flame cleanse me spell that only requires like 12 faith. It feels like Lake of Rot is in the game to confuse, troll and intimidate you. But like I said, with the right equipment and some general knowledge you get by dying a few times, Lake of Rot is like a basilisk. It intimidates you with its big fake eyes, but it's not all that bad. Number seven, Farron Keep from Dark Souls 3. Farron Keep is yet another poison swamp. And hey, nobody likes a poison swamp except for one Hidetaka. What makes Farron Keep arguably the worst poison swamp out there is that it takes away your ability to run and it makes you fat roll. It's extremely annoying when you're trying to deal with local inhabitants, giant goat things called Guru, especially with a few at a time. 
time, all while desperately trying to manage your poison buildup, rolling away like an old man you are. I don't remember having too much trouble going through Fire and Keep, and the boss you have to fight in the end, the Abyss Watchers, is one of my favorite Dark Souls 3 bosses design wise. But running around the swamp, dodging extremely annoying Guru, trying to locate the flames is a very tedious experience. Like I said, I don't find Fire and Keep ridiculously hard or anything, and in comparison with other locations from this list, it's a walk in the park, but as a separate experience, Fire and Keep is quite obnoxious and unfair at times. And at number 6, I have another location from Dark Souls 1, and it's featured in this video not because it's unfair or overly difficult or too long, it's here because of how half arsed and unfinished it feels compared to other locations in the game. Of course, I'm talking about Lost Isolith, I think we can all agree on that. This whole thing feels like it was just slapped together by a B team because the A team was doing something else or simply running out of time or something. You have to run through a whole lot of weird dragon arse demons, but only this time they can attack you and they can hurt you alright, especially with their jump attacks. Luckily they're slow, they have a small aggro range and they hit each other and they don't respawn. On top of that you have to wear orange ring at all times going through Lost Isolith because otherwise you will just die of lava. Also this lava hurts my eyes more than Wikipedia does. The pinnacle of Lost Isolith bullshittery is of course the area boss Beta Chaos, but we're not taking bosses in consideration in this video. For that, check out my top 10 worst bosses in Soulsborne games. Lost Isolith is a terrible location and it has every right to be here among other stinkies, but at least it's not too long or too difficult. And hey, before we continue, if you want to see more Soulsborne slash Soulslike related content, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell thing to get notified when I upload, it supports the channel greatly. Likes, shares and comments are always appreciated too. Thank you very much, back to the video now. And at number 5 I have a location from Demon's Souls and holy shit balls, it's Swamp of Sorrow. I almost hate how cliche it is that I have so many poison swamps in here, but if Miyazaki can't resist it, neither can I. I hated every single second spent in Swamp of Sorrow on my first playthrough, but not because you can't roll and run in deep water, also not because you're constantly getting poisoned and poison drastically reduces how much you can heal. It's definitely not because of all the intimidating jellyfish things that slowly move towards you and poison you on impact. No, it's just not fun. Having the sodden ring that grants you higher mobility in deep water is a must here and you need to make sure you have enough noble lotus to remove poison status. Regenerator's ring also makes things a bit easier but hey, don't tell me this shit's fun. I'll puke in my mouth once more. In the end you get to fight Dirty Colossus, it's fun, and I can't wait to fight Fire Dirty Colossus in the Elden Ring DLC. I also feel like ranking all the poison swamps in From Software Games video is in order. At number 4 I have a location from Dark Souls 1 again that I just never look forward to visiting and it's Tomb of the Giants. It's quite an obvious pick and there's nothing much to say about it. It's dark and having a lantern or sunlight maggot helm helps but not too much. On this list we have artificially difficult locations, long locations, poison swamps, locations filled with traps and platforming, but Tomb of the Giants is none of that. It's a boring location. There's nothing much to explore here and I just want to run through it as fast as I can every time I do a new playthrough. Just fuck this place. Also, even though there's a bonfire in the middle, I need to run back as one of my most despised. But I'm not placing Tomb of the Giants at number 4 for the disgusting run back. I'm placing it here because it's a chore and it sucks arse. At number 3 I have a location from Dark Souls 2 and it's one of the worst locations in the base game in my opinion. The Iron Keep. Just like Lost Isolith, it's painful to look at because of all the lava but that's not the main issue here of course. Look, I feel like I need to say that I like Dark Souls 2 a lot, it's one of my most favorite From Software games of all time actually, but locations like Iron Keep make me understand why a lot of people hate the game so much. The Iron Keep feels like a prank. There are a lot of prank areas and bosses in Dark Souls 2 and you kinda learn to accept them for what they are but the Iron Keep just hits different. There's absolutely no reason to have that many enemies here. You have knights with katanas, archers that are placed so terribly on ledges super far away from you, you have to cross narrow bridges, you have to do platforming, it's just hot mess, pun intended. And the fact that Dark Souls 2 doesn't give you any iframes when going through fog walls is a rotten cherry on the shit cake. 
Some of you might say, hey, actually Dark Souls 2 lets you despawn enemies for good by clearing the area multiple times. And yes, you are correct. But where does killing enemies like what, 13 times over to make a terribly designed location a bit less terrible involve fun? Nowhere. It's not fun. The Iron Keep is an artificially difficult location and it's hated by many for a reason. And next up goes another prank location from Dark Souls 2 and go ahead try to pretend you're not surprised. At number 2 I have the disgusting and beautiful Shrine of Amana. This place has everything an area needs to piss you off. Casters with homing spells and ridiculous attack range strategically sprinkled throughout the place. You can drown to death trying to reach them because it's really hard to see where it's safe to walk and where it's not. There's a bunch of melee enemies, a cyclops, poison mushroom things that destroy your equipment and it's a two room area with a fog wall in the middle. I remember spending days trying to get through Shrine of Amana on my first playthrough but the thing with Shrine of Amana is just like with every location made to piss you off, running past all the enemies will give you just as much headache. Nowadays I just bring a bow with a ton of lightning arrows and a pinch of patience but my very first run through Shrine of Amana like permanently damaged me and I will never forget that. And my number one on this list absolutely has to be this Dark Souls 2 area called frigid outskirts. I mean what else? What in the living fuck is frigid outskirts? I feel like it's safe to say that frigid outskirts is the worst location in the entire series. It's like a literal frozen hell shithole. Even the bonfire there is called expulsion chamber making it a place where all the scum of the earth should be sent to to spend the rest of their hollow arse days roaming about getting bullied by fuck monster reindeers. Frigid Outskirts has every instrument to pull the very essence, the very soul out of you, then desecrate it, spit on it, piss on it and put it back through your arse sideways. That's for every reindeer you encounter. You will experience snow blizzards that obscure your vision and take away what's left of your sense of direction. But that's the least of your worries, with blizzards they come, the reindeers. They come out of nowhere and just fuck you up. I can't stress enough about how annoying this is. If you're experiencing nasty flashbacks right now, just breathe buddy. Listen to my voice, I'm here with you. What makes this area slightly more manageable is of course the summons and the fact that you can despawn all the reindeers. You only have to kill them 13 times and you're all good. There's a Pharisee's lockstone thing you can find along the way and I think that the location would be so much better if there was a secret bonfire behind it or something but no, all you get is healing water. It's probably worth mentioning that the boss you have to beat in Reindeer Fuckland is not all that good in just a reskin but in this video it doesn't really matter. Frigid Outskirts is the worst location in the series and I think we can all agree on that. If you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like or maybe even share it with friends. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MightyMelvo, join our community discord for chats. All the links are in the description. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.